Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. I promised you guys I would circle back and talk about some more targets for this USC program in the transfer portal as more names have entered in. And I got a lot of names that I want to go over in terms of links to USC. Really excited to get into this one. Before we do, and as always, just want to say thank you to you guys. A massive shout out to the USC fans. We do a lot of these transfer portal episodes for a lot of different programs. The ones for USC are always the most popular. The amount of support y'all continue to show to the boys truly does mean a lot. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Much more importantly, would love to hear some of your thoughts and opinions on some of these players that we are going to talk about because there are some guys that I think should be priority one targets for USC. There's also some really good players that although they are good players that make this USC team better, I don't know if I'm USC. I'm going after some of these guys that we're going to talk about. Want to get into it and want to start with Deion Hayes coming over from Pitt. Now he's going to take a visit to USC this weekend. Turned on the film from him late last night. Watched him against Louisville. Watched him against Virginia Tech. And I'll say this. This is a player that significantly makes USC's defense better. Now, the reason I'm going to say if I'm USC, I'm probably not going after him as hard as I am for some other players. It's because I think at that edge position, USC is in a really good spot. And if you see how the transfer portal works, I mean, one, you only got so many scholarships. Number two, you only have so many recruiting resources, if you will, to get some of these guys to the program. I look at that edge rusher room, say Anthony Lucas, Shelby, Fountain, Sam Green, maybe even Nate Clifton playing some edge and saying, I don't know if the juice is worth the squeeze on a guy like Deion Hayes, who's going to be coveted out of the transfer portal. This is probably one of the better pure edge rushers that's available right now. So it's in a tricky spot where, yes, he makes this USC team better. I'm normally in favor of grabbing guys that make your team better. I just don't know if I, the resources is worth bringing Deion Hayes in. And I think another element of this is, and you look at Dan Hayes and you look at this USC program and two years ago, Lincoln Riley, he had to get very, I, I'd probably use the word desperate in the transfer portal to retool that roster when he took over. You look at this USC team now, and I don't think they need to be desperate to just take in every single player that's in the transfer portal. If I'm USC, I trust what you have in Lucas with in Shelby, Sam Green, and say, I don't know if we necessarily need to push our resources into a guy like Dayon Hayes when you got some really good young edge rushers that you feel really good about heading into 2024. It's difficult because he's a very good player. I was very impressed with what I saw from Dayon Hayes, but I also really like what USC has at that edge rusher position. The next player I want to talk about, and I think the star of the show, if you will, and that's Dominic Williams coming from TCU. There were a lot of rumors about Dominic Williams entering the transfer portal way back in the winter portal window. He finally hits. He's the best interior defensive lineman available in the portal. Probably will be the best at the end of this portal as well. And if I'm USC, I think this is one of those players that you push your chips into the middle for, right? And I, I think partially why I'm saying Deion Hayes, maybe I'm staying away from. You look at USC, is it possible to land both Dominic Williams and and Dan Hayes, probably not. So if you're asking me, what player does USC need more heading into 2024? It's Dominic Williams. And for all the media talk about USC not being able to play along the line of scrimmage in the Big Ten, you go into 2024, into the Big Ten with Dominic Williams and Bear Alexander, it, the, the narrative quickly changes around what USC can do along the line of scrimmage. I especially love Dominic Williams because I think he really compliments Bear Alexander where you can kind of stick Dominic Williams at that one, that nose tech situation. And he is going to be a guy that eats up double teams, can be disruptive, but wins at the point of attack. And you get to put Bear Alexander in some other spots where he can be a little bit more of a penetrator, a guy that can stuff the stashy in terms of sacks and tackles for loss. I love Dominic Williams as a player. I love the fit next to him, uh, next to Bear Alexander. I think this is by far one of the biggest needs for this USC program. If there's a player that you're pushing your chips in the middle for, I think it's going to be Dominic Williams for me now. I think the conversation you have is he's going to be an expensive player to bring in. Like There are going to be a lot of resources that you need to use. You're going up against Oklahoma, 
Texas. I'm sure LSU is going to get in the middle of this one as well. So I think USC, you got to think, all right, Don McWilliams, probably the guy that we want to go after, but at what cost? I trust Lincoln Riley, Coach Henderson, Dan Lynn to kind of figure out how USC wants to go about getting those guys. Don McWilliams, for me, by far the biggest target for USC. Next guy I want to quickly brush over. We talked about him a little bit earlier. Jermaine Lalea sounds like USC is very much in play. He's got four visits set up. USC is going to get the last visit, I believe. I love that. He's from the state of California. He played at Arizona State. This is a guy that when he's healthy, he is an extremely good football player. I personally like Dominic Williams more because I think he fits what USC is looking for a little bit. Jermaine Lalea kind of like Bear Alexander in terms of a penetrator, a guy that is going to stuff the stat sheet a little bit more. Two really good players at positions that we really wanted to see USC address. Really big fan of Lolea. I'm probably putting it as Dominic Williams and then Jermaine Lolea. And then the next guy that I think USC should sneakily maybe get involved in with on the defensive line is Simeon Barrow Jr. Just hit the transfer portal earlier this morning from Michigan State. This is a guy that you're looking for some pass rush juice on the inside. Simeon Barrow Jr. is probably that guy, right? He's not going to be the most coveted defensive lineman in the portal, but you look at the numbers, 17 quarterback hurries, a 14% pass rush win rate in the Big Ten last year. Those are extremely impressive numbers. Had a phenomenal game against Nebraska. Watched that one back this morning. This is a guy that can be a game wrecker. I think not necessarily a game wrecker, but a guy that can give you some juice on the inside in the pass rush. Again, is it the kind of body that USC is necessarily looking for? No, I'd probably say Dominic Williams is that kind of body. You talk about adding depth to the inside of this defensive line from a guy that has played a lot of football at the Power 5 level. Simeon Barrow Jr. I think is a very, very nice target for USC on the defensive line. And to kind of culminate this conversation, we got to talk about one of the last names that has hit the portal. I haven't been able to give you guys my take on it yet. And that is Cormani McLean. There's interest in USC. And I'll start it off with this. If Lincoln Riley, Doug Belk, Danton Lynn meet with Cormani McLean and say, hey, this is what it's going to have to look like. This is what we expect from you. And during that conversation, you get the sense that he is ready to kind of change his ways. We all know the stories that happened during Colorado. You got to bet on him. And that's just my take. College football at the end of the day it is a athletic sport. You got to get the superior athletes. That's probably how I should have said that. Kermani McLean, from an athleticism standpoint, coming out of high school, he's a superior athlete. This is a guy that could be a first-round NFL draft pick if he figures it out. So you want to bet on those trades, but you got to have that meeting first. You got to figure out what's going on. And if you kind of trust that there's a chance that we can get him back on the right path, go fire away on Kermani McLean. That being said, don't blindly go get him because I kind of want to culminate this, this conversation with – you look at USC and say, this is a pretty strong roster. Two years ago, when Lincoln Riley took over, he just had to go get bodies in the transfer portal. Largely last year, there was still some of that leftover where we just need guys to come to our roster. You look at USC, a couple of recruiting classes under Lincoln Riley's belt, and you say, this is a pretty damn good roster. It's really easy to see every name that hits the transfer portal and say, you're going to be a USC Trojan. You're going to be a USC Trojan. You have so much young talent. You want to make sure you are letting those young talent, those young talented guys on your roster develop, get reps in practice. So I don't think it should be blindly take as many good players as USC can. I think you want to take good players in the positions you need to take them, but also trust the guys that you recruited out of high school on your roster that you're really excited about as well. That's kind of my take on it. So if I'm giving you guys kind of a breakdown of some of the names that I'm really going after, Dominic Williams has to be number one. I think he's the best interior defensive lineman available. Jermaine Lolea and Simeon Barrow, those are probably the next guys that I really like on the inside. CJ West from Kent State, also a really attractive guy. And then you have guys like Deion Hayes or Kermani McLean who are really good players. They elevate the potential of this team 
But if you have only limited resources, use those resources where they're best used. And I think that's on the inside of the defensive line. That's probably my take. I would love to hear from you guys in the comment section. My brain has been spinning regarding how I would go about this if I'm Lincoln Riley and USC. That's why they don't pay me the big bucks. That's why I'm in my basement talking about it. Lincoln Riley's getting paid the money to make it happen. Would love to hear from you guys in the comment section. And if you got, if y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys. And we'll talk to y'all later.